What is up guys, again, Not The Worst here, bringing another Black Desert online video, and today we're taking a look at the patch notes for August 25th. We have a few new events uh, coming on, and then we do see some of the nerfs that were implemented in Nova and Sage coming along as well from the Global Lab, headed on over, so let's jump in and take a look. First up, we've got an event for new and returning adventurers. It's going to be login rewards, and they're looking uh, pretty good, if I do say so myself, um, if we take a look at those by not clicking on everything except it. Um, so what you're going to get for each login that you get here, you can see outfit box. This is for new adventurers, some inventory expansion, a little bit of money. We got pets in there, discount coupons, blessing of comma silv, et cetera, et cetera. You do get a seven day value pack uh, in there and some Shikatu seals. And now the returning adventurers are going to be a little more focused on uh, enhancing materials as long as as well as a few other things. They get a seven day value pack pretty quickly in it. Some advice of Valks, you can see more Shikatu seals there given out than in the new adventurer and ending with the fine accessory box too. So if you're thinking about trying out the game, well, it's going to be on sale 70% off right now. And if you're thinking about coming back to it, not a terrible time. They also do mention, and this was kind of clever on their part, that they have a uh, quest to obtain a pen accessory. You can get a pen narc, tongue grad, earring, or crescent by following with a quest for kill quest for like 76 days or something if they still give you the initial uh, little boost to it um, but they have the details for that if you weren't familiar with that quest already uh, like i said i do think it was a good idea they reminded people of that because i'm sure there's a lot of people that kind of check the patch notes every once in a while even though they haven't been playing the game recently next up we've got world boss grand slam this is double drop rate and it does include uh, vel garmoth as well um, so those hearts are going to be a double drop as well as your boss weapons. Um, so if you've got some alt set up for it, it's a good time to get back into using those. We've got celebrating 2000 days of Black Desert event. This is a pretty simple event. It's one time you're going to go see an NPC GM Silver in Velia. Uh, talk to him and then you type in um, something like happy 2000 days or something. Uh, let's pull it up and then take a look here so I can give it to you exactly. You're going to enter happy, yep, happy 2000 day BDO in the chat window and then turn in the question you get to. 200 crons. Um, it's just once per family, and that's it. So you'll just go see him as far as location. He's right there. Uh, so there you go. 200, 200 crons for you um, to just pick up pretty easily. And aside from that, we have Goodbye Summer, Hello 24 Hour XP time. This is going to run until September 8th. It's a 300% combat XP and 50% skill XP bonus uh, that's going on. And this is 24 7, not just during hot times. And we have a special, special package sale. This is, like I mentioned, 70% off the Black Desert Game Pass. Moving on to character updates, my one of my favorite updates, second to the uh, loot scroll update that is hopefully coming soon, is the change to the Elvia weapon usage. It is now a buff, thankfully, so you're going to just interact with a spirit, uh, whichever one it is, Okiar, Nark, or Valtara, and then choose Awakening or Main Weapon, just like before, and you do not have to equip weapons or worry about equipping weapons. Uh, for it, the quests uh, line for that, uh, like the Zarka barricade thing, have been adjusted so that you're talking to NPCs to complete that instead of uh, having to get the weapons like you had to before. Um, so you'll still be able to do it, but they did adjust the quests accordingly. Characters now have auto sprint uh, that is set up when you're using your auto run function, similar to if you have uh, what is it, artisan training on a horse. You can use auto sprint on your horse. You can now do that on your character as well. Uh, trial characters that end up in restricted areas are going to be automatically moved to the battle arena. Now for a massive change to Dark Knight, we saw this on the Global Labs and now it is implemented here. Uh, we have changed Dark Knight face type to something that's occurring. Uh, and then skin type here, I guess she hit the tanning bed a little bit or started seeing a dermatologist because this actually probably looked a little more realistic and now it's super smooth and whatever. So that's a thing. Okay, on to the nerfs. Nova. Fuse Gravity reduced the recovery of Star's Breath from 10% to 5% per scattered star when using the skill. Twisted Orbit and Excel Twisted Orbit changed the consumable resource for the, the skills to the following uh, before it was consuming 30 SP upon use. It's now going to consume 50 stamina upon using it uh, while it's off cooldown and 100 stamina while using it during cooldown. And the note on why this is a thing, adjustments were made to aspects of Nova's performance. Previously, you could move freely even with a relatively low amount of stamina thanks to the stamina recovery effect of Swooping Ring and using certain skill movements consumed no stamina, especially in Awakening state. During the early stages of Awakening, you were only strong for PvP while in Excel mode, so this served the purpose of providing an enhanced utility by alleviating the restrictions for using many skills. However, additional updates, including improvements made to skill combos for many skills, made her more powerful than we initially aimed for, especially when you were not in Excel mode. 
Since a small adjustment seemed necessary, the consumable resource for Twisted Orbit was changed from SP to Stamina, so that Novas would have to take care in using the skill. Additionally, Star's Ring, one of the major awakening skills in a PvP setting, also performs exceptionally well on its own in a majority of battles. However, Fuse Gravity allowed for excessive use of Star's Breath Recovery when the skill comboed with other skills such as On Guard. Therefore, Star's Breath Recovered via Fuse Gravity was adjusted to 5%. Okay, next up, Sage. Let's 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 jump into this here one. So uh, first up, we've got uh, the form shift. Remove the critical hit rate effect. Just Sage in general, and then specifically into Awakening, Lightning Prison. Change the skill's critical hit rate effect to be applied for PVE. Bolt uh, change so that your character will no longer disappear, and change to the invincible. Change the invincible effect to the super armor effect, and then you can see they act, they worked on the animations. If you weren't keeping up with the global labs, people were unhappy with what it looked like initially. So this is now uh, how that's going to be implemented. Lightning prison and flow interrogate fix the issue where the skill effect would be applied at a height higher uh, than which it should normally be applied. Couple other issue fixes. Okay, l l let me talk about this before I read their note. So when this was announced on the global labs, I'm gonna say there was a lot of sages just straight up like molding, okay, over this thing, right? I didn't have a dog in this fight. I had no idea, right? I played Sage for maybe a week when it first came out to level 61, did some PvE with it, and this was just Succession, and I really didn't like the playstyle Sages, and for me, it's fun. Then they release Awakening. I couldn't be bothered to even do an Awakening quest to go back and try it out, so I did not even try Sage Awakening, so no idea other than running into a few in open world, literally a few, two, three since then, okay? So I went and watched Zethian stream a couple of days ago, maybe two, three, I don't know, a few days ago, right? And I'm like, let me let me just see before these nerfs come in, like, you know, what's going on? Maybe they talk on the topic, and they weren't, but he was in RBF. Like, are you guys kidding me? Are you, are you kidding me? Like, play a regular class and then go to Sage, and you're crying because this is going from an iframe to a super armor? Are you kidding me? His entire kit of protected movement is absolutely ridiculous if you are crying because this is going from an iframe to a super armor don't know what to tell you get good kid are you kidding me it is insane the protection that this guy has in movement he is all over the field and you can do nothing about it okay it's ridiculous get over it this is a totally fine nerf that is not going to hit him into the ground he is uh, was obviously way over tuned and i don't know that this is going to bring him into reality of just being an incredibly strong class this might still have him slightly over tuned but we'll see i couldn't believe as i watched it i'm like do you guys even remember what other classes look like like in an rbf like just movement do you even remember what it looks like because this class was absolutely nuts so i don't want to hear it man get over it is not a big deal uh, as far as the notes on it there were adjustments made to the performance of awakened sages in addition to awakened novas first of all using bolt would make your character invincible and disappear from sight and then allow you to proceed to attack right away with another skill to overcome your enemy these features were relatively too powerful accordingly adjustments were made so that your character will no longer disappear when using bolt and the invincible effect was changed to a super armor effect additionally the critical hit rate plus 100 percent effect was deemed too advantageous in a multiverse multi-battle so the effect was removed admittedly on that portion i don't know i'm just speaking strictly to the movement um, of the the bolt skill in general so it could be that the critical hit rate adjustments and i know there was another one that was pv only now uh, admittedly, those could be like a larger impact than I realize. Sure, I'll, I'll give you that one, but don't don't cry to me about both. Uh, you're still able to maintain quite a high critical rate with uh, without it through other buffs or skill add-ons as well. Corsair, we see the 10, uh, 25%, and 50% Black Spirit Rage skills added. A couple of issue fixes with a few other skills, and then they do um, a, make an adjustment to an Awakening skill. I don't recall actually seeing this one on the Global Lab that happened. This is for the Awakening skill, uh, Wave Breaker Patrica. You can see here that it still maintains its stiffness, but uh, the no character collision while moving backwards or laterally is going to be nullified during cooldown. You see a larger reduction for PvP damage as the overall damage is increased a little bit from 862 to 949, and it's also going to consume 100 stamina while, when used while on cooldown as well. Um, some adjustments to attack range for things to line up a little bit better and improve the pull effect on Ocean's Allure as well. Item updates, uh, they, this Cephia Armor with Nova is actually addressed in the Pearl Shop, so we'll, we'll take a look at that when we get to it. Uh, content updates, they, we see the red battlefield adjustments for how enemies and people on your team appear on your map. You can see you got red and white to make it a little easier uh, for you to identify when looking at the mini map who's who with that instead of having to check the mini map and directly in front of your face to see what's going on. Uh, then we also see Savage Rift and Altar of Blood are currently removed as they're going to undergo a renewal. 
uh, so they'll be temporarily unavailable. The quests that uh, require those things have been either straight up removed, or in the case of uh, some quests where you have Into the Abyss, Kafir's Journal, or uh, Fugars, that uh, season where you have to enter Savage Rift, things like that, they were adjusted so that you're going to have to just talk to somebody else instead to get those completed if you need it. Monster, no real updates here, just that the Cagdom Prisoners aren't going to attack the Otters now, if you're on Corsair, because it seemed like they were doing that. Rare hunting monster hawks begin to drop feathers at the spot where it lands when it falls from the sky. Successfully hunting down the hawk will grant you a small amount of supreme lightweight plumes. Uh, quest updates improved to allow a character that has not yet done the Ataraxian main quest line to be able to enter Ataraxian through the ancient stone chamber Soul Magia NPC. Upon completion of the quest, Vaha's time capsule that can be accepted once per family during the main quest of Ataraxia. Quest names for the, uh, this is what I talked about before, the completion of the Elvia weapons that are now buffs have been changed and to complete those has been changed accordingly. Conquest War, Node War, we see some implementation of what's been going on in the Global Labs as they continue to kind of tweak what it is really overall they want to do with this. They increase the damage of your horse hits by 10% when dealt on a wooden fence or a wooden fence gate during the war. Uh, increase the damage of your Guild Elephant, Basic Skills, Horn Attack, Charge Attack, and Four Chop hits by 10% when hitting a wooden fence. Change the display info, the passengers mounted upon an ogre or a troll quest in Conquest Wars, as you can see there. They've got a pretty interesting dev note here, so jump on down there and let's talk about that. Uh, we've got now you can assemble all types of annexes with just a single type of item previously you had to prepare and store a different item for each level in the guild storage now you can manage your items with a single annex assembly uh, tool item however like the previous items this item is not stackable uh, we hope this updates meaningful to adventurers who are preparing for node and conquest wars likewise we're continuously looking for ways to improve wars preparation process such as constructing annexes more conveniently and easily some of our adventurers gave us ideas such as preset and remote installation which we're currently reviewing however since we haven't reached a decision on their implementation yet we'll keep you updated through the black desert global lab once it's confirmed and at the final stage of develop development please keep providing us with your valuable opinions uh, you can receive rewards from your mailbox according to the results of the guild you served in as a war hero. You can do so once your contract expires after having participated in the war as a war hero. And if you've not like, claimed a participation award, war heroes who had participated in Conquest Wars but didn't claim their participation rewards, especially after the contract had expired post-August 4th maintenance, will now see those rewards issued through in-game mail on August 25th. That felt like... Uh, like reading like small print after like, I don't know, like a car sale event, you know, when the dude's reading like ultra fast, like fine print, that's like kind of irrelevant. Uh, UI updates added a skill filter to the skill window to make it easier to find skills with debuff and smash effects, including black spirit skills, skill add-ons, stun and stiffness. This is really handy. We saw this on the global lab. Uh, I think it's another great QOL improvement that they're bringing into the games. They continue to work on those things. A few other adjustments throughout UI as we've seen, and from that, let's jump on over to the Pearl Shop and take a look at what we have going on this week for the sales. Product updates, this is the Cephia Armor update they were talking about, so the shoes and gloves uh, can be independent of it now, and you can see what it looks like without uh, the shoes and the gloves, and here it is with, so that's that. Uh, new, we have the Cabellius Divinus set for Sage is available, so you can get that as uh, independent pieces, premium set. Uh, classic set, whatever your choice is there. And then, of course, along with the release of that, we see a pack to go with it for 3,400 pearls where you can get the Divina Selection Pack 1, Pack 2, and Pack 3. There you go. You can get the Classic set by itself for Shy for 2,900 pearls. Then we have the Triple Premium Pack. That is, of course, Triple the Premium Packs, three of those Premium Outfit Packs, uh, outfit packs along with 50, uh, five Loot Scrolls, excuse me, for 6,800 pearls. And then where does that 15 Loot Scrolls come in? That's in the Select Your Buff Pack. You can choose a 15-day Book of Old Moon or Blessing of Comisilv, and you'll get 15 Item Drop Scrolls, and that's 1,250 pearls. Not a bad value for the amount of scrolls you're getting by any means. The Lovely Pet Pack is going to get you the Arctic Fox, which is the drop rate increase. Um, pet along with uh, the Panther pet does it as well. You can't stack those, but if you don't have one of these and you're looking for it, not a bad time to pick it up. It's not always available. And then you'll also get to pick uh, from a Penguin, Hedgehog, Polar Bear, Baphomet, or Coonan Search Dog. It's 2,800 pearls for the whole pack. Triple Maids pack, similar to the outfit, is Triple the Maids. You're going to pick three maids from the set for 2,400 pearls. Also not terrible. Then we have the Glorious Shudad pack. Now listen, I'm going to say it's Shudad. Shudad. If you put in the flipping comments uh, one more time that it is Glorious Shoe Dad, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and ban you from commenting again. I don't want to hear it. This word is whatever I want it to be. If I say Shoe Dad, it's Shoe Dad. I don't want to hear you commenting telling me it's Shoe Dad. The only time I'm hearing Dad is when I slept with your mom last night and she was calling me Daddy. Do not do it. I will ban you. I'm tired of seeing it. Don't want to hear it. That pack is 55.25 pearls. 
you're going to get a 30 day value pack as long as well as a 15 day book of commissil blessing of commissil and book of old moon and then the shootouts courier courier to go with it bonus of that five blessed message scrolls five item drop scrolls and a 20 percent discount coupon and then of course the premium set itself it's also available for the mail setting obviously and guardian nova have that set as well separate one for shy if you're looking for that character slot expansion coupon is one plus one so you can pick up two uh two spaces for new characters for 600 pearls so essentially 50 percent off but you can't get one for 300 pearls two for 600 enhancement specialty pack is 960 pearls this is going to get you 20 artisans 20 valks cry a bonus of 20 memory fragments 10 pure magical black stones and 50 cron stones as well let me see the, the pearl box 1000 this is gonna this is interesting i don't know that i've seen this before but a thousand pearl box is actually going to get you 2000 pearls you'll also get a 20 percent discount coupon and a 10 percent discount coupon pretty interesting um here it's going to make me buy them so probably a great idea because i'm going to do it so they you win uh sale we've got the witch labrieve premium set on sale for 2720 pearls our weekly um costume set that is reduced priced so probably the cron stone uh, one that you are seeking out looking for those that is it for the patch notes and the pearl shop for this week let me know what you guys think about the stuff going on in the comments down below if you did enjoy the video be sure to like it if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe so you get notifications when new videos do go live and if you'd like to catch me playing live there is a link to my twitch page in the description down below you can jump on over there drop a follow so you get notifications for that as well with that said that's going to be it for this one I want to thank everybody for watching and i will see you next time